This living nightmare began recently. It all happened when I took a late night train home. There was a man standing in the same carriage as me, and he was almost at the opposite end. I noticed that he was staring at me. He wasn't being exactly subtle about it. He was about five foot nine and he was middle aged and kind of chubby. He was tired looking and he was wearing a gray suit. When I looked towards him, he didn't stop staring. I went back to my phone, but I hated his eyes on me. I'm a female in her twenties, by the way. This guy creeped me out, to be honest, and it's not a surprise to run into a perv on this line because it goes right through the red light district. I tried not to give it much thought, and I went home without incident that night. This happened one night, back in March. A few weeks later, I was riding the train. It was a weekend night, I think. I remember the train being pretty busy. I saw that creep again, and he was staring at me from a distance like before. I tried to ignore him and just focus on my phone, but from the corner of my eye, I could see him pushing through the crowd to get close to me. I was worried because this train line is also known for groping, especially during rush hour. He was trying to move through the crowd to stand behind me. I was getting scared now. Luckily, I could see my reflection in the carriage's window whenever we passed through somewhere dark. I thought about what I could do. I had my phone in hand ready to call the police if he did anything. I braced myself, but he didn't touch me. I kept watching him in the reflection of the windows and I could see that he was smelling my hair. It grossed me out so much that I felt physically sick. I thought that even if I called the cops on him, they wouldn't be interested. I mean, I guess I had a weak case. I thought that he smelled my hair. So once again, I went home, luckily, without any further incident. A month or two passed, and then I saw that creep for the first time outside of the train. It was night. I got off at my usual station and started walking home. After a while, I noticed that there was someone walking behind me. A few moments later, and he was right behind me. I turned my head to take a peek over my shoulder and realized that it was the train guy. Once again, he was staring right at me. I was really frightened, so I got to the end of the road, slowed down to allow him to pass me. He did pass, but he kept staring at me with every step he took. Then, as if he changed his mind, he stopped in his tracks and stared at me again. I felt so freaked out by this man I had to run to the nearest light source, which happened to be a convenience store. I hung out there for a while, and then I ran home. Hardly any time passed before the next time I had a run-in with that man. I was heading home late again due to working overtime. I was on the train at around midnight. As I was walking down this dark road, it was near pitch black, and a bicycle whizzed past me from behind. As it went by, the cyclist turned his neck to look at me, and I recognized him straight away. It was the weirdo from the train. This time, I was just wearing a t-shirt and shorts. He kept looking back at me as he was cycling away, and then he stopped, stared a while, and then slowly cycled back towards me down the narrow alley we were both in. I ran again. This time, on the phone to the police, I scrambled into a nearby business hotel and the police sent a patrol car to the neighborhood to look for that guy. The next time I ran into that creep was just last month. I was walking home like normal and someone grabbed me from behind. It was so horrible, it, it felt like he just came out of the shadows. I hated the idea of being touched by that man. I screamed and kicked out like an animal. I broke free and before I saw his face I knew it was that man. He started walking at me and I was saved by an employee of a local restaurant who had heard the commotion. I called the police again, but it felt like they were being kind of standoffish. I didn't really feel safe. The next incident occurred only a few days ago. Last Friday night, actually. I arrived at my station at around 11pm. 
I didn't want to be out late, but I had to go to a co-worker's birthday drinks. I was a little more confident that night, and a little less scared. I guess that was because I had a couple of drinks on board. Then, all that confidence went out of the window when the train guy appeared. It was like the first time I saw him. He was wearing that grey coat and that grey suit. He was stood there doing his usual disturbing thing, staring at me. Before I knew it, I was running. I guess it's true what they say about fight or flight, right? I had never been so scared in my life. Why couldn't this guy just leave me alone? My heart started thundering in my chest when I heard his heavy footfall coming up behind me. He was chasing me. Thankfully, like I said before, the guy was pretty chubby, so I was easily able to pull away from him. I guess I'm fortunate that my parents made me join the track and field club back at school. I got home safely, and I was relieved, but concerned. I'm certain this man is stalking me. There's no real end to this story, as it is an ongoing part of my life at the moment. Note. This story was posted on August the 28th of 2020. There have been no more comments by the writer. This is a story I was told by my granddad. He grew up during the war, and back then many of the houses had these dirt floors out in the countryside. It was pretty normal, apparently, in Japan. I will try to provide you with word for word for what my grandfather told me. His father was a taxi driver, and his mother died before he was five years old. His dad needed to work every hour God sent him, just to keep food on the table. It couldn't have been easy back then. Since he was a taxi driver, he worked a lot of antisocial hours. He would stay with his neighbors while his father was working, and then when his father finished work, he would come and get him again. It became more and more frequent, and his father didn't want to be a bother to his neighbors after they had been so helpful, so sometimes, when he knew that he would be home really late, he would leave my father alone in the house. Of course, this situation wasn't ideal, and my grandfather said that he was often very lonely and scared home alone. He said that he would sit on the floor and cry and call for his father often. The neighbors would hear this, but they couldn't do much as they didn't want to intervene. One night, the neighbor heard my grandfather's cries, and then they heard laughter. They thought to themselves, hey, that's great, maybe his dad's come home. But a couple of hours later, they heard my grandfather call out to his father as he came through the door. The neighbor thought it was strange because they were convinced that my granddad was talking with someone next door. Over the course of the days and weeks, the neighbors heard my grandpa laughing and talking with someone next door when they knew that his father was out driving his taxi. The neighbor grew concerned and suspicious, so they went to investigate. My grandpa was apparently sat alone in the kitchen on the dirt floor, in the dark, laughing and speaking with something unseen. They were really worried about him, so they waited with him until his father came home. When his dad came home, he was asked directly who had he been speaking with every night, and my grandfather said in response, I've been speaking to the mother. I was scared and lonely and crying, so the mother came. She hugs me and rubs my cheeks. She cares about me. His father then asked about how this mother was getting in and out, and my granddad pointed at a corner of the kitchen. The dirt was disturbed in this area. There was a gap between the bottom of the wooden wall and the dirt floor. Someone could have crawled in and out through that gap. My granddad then said to his dad, She crawls through every night, smiling at me. Well, my granddad's dad was disturbed by that and covered the gap with boards and asked for a reduction of hours at work while he looked for a new place. 
Sometimes at night, he said he heard scratching against the boards, but could never find anyone out there when he went to look for the source of the sound. I'm a security guard, and this happened about half a year ago. Something or someone turned up during my shift, and I can't really explain it. Like I said, I'm a security guard. I don't work supermarkets, factories, or events. I patrol a number of contracted properties. So more often than not, I'm patrolling a school. Elementary schools and high schools mainly. The shift usually starts at around 9 or 10 p.m., because occasionally some of these schools have events or teachers working late. Things like that. It's never great if staff are on site. Well, I don't think so. I prefer the solitude. You might imagine that I'm walking around the school grounds as my patrol, but my company doesn't ask that of me all that much. I'm not sure what other companies are like, though. My job is patrolling inside the school. When I say inside the school, I mean I'm not going around the perimeter. I'm actually in the school grounds. This would involve going around and making sure that all the valuables like computers and gym equipment are locked away and no windows or any other access points are left open. I would usually go outside at some point, but most of the night I would very occasionally go outside of the school grounds at some point, but most of the night is within the school grounds. Which, you know, isn't too bad. On rainy days, I can go inside the buildings easily, I guess. One bad thing about the school buildings is that they are often long and shaped like a capital letter H. It takes a little bit of time to do a full lap of them. Anyway, now that I've set the scene somewhat, let's get back to the story. This someone or something that turned up on my shift wasn't following me around. It was outside of the school grounds. In short, it was going along behind the fences and walls of the school. At first I thought, I was just hearing some human's footsteps, but then things began to get a little strange. The school's fences and walls were all uneven. It was a weird school, and they even had stairs on the outside of the buildings. It would take about an hour to go around the school from outside of the walls. So when I went outside, I heard these footsteps following me. Every step I took was mirrored by this unseen person or thing. There are times when they should go faster or slower since they are behind the wall, but they don't, they just copy me. I mean, these footsteps weren't causing me harm, but they were kind of freaking me out. I can't really complain or do anything about it, because whatever was beyond the walls and fences didn't show much interest in coming in here. Besides, if there is someone out there at night copying my movements, do I really want to tick them off? I would rather at least be able to hear where they are rather than not. This phenomenon has been happening a lot recently, every time I work at that particular school, to be honest. I have begun to understand that there is a kind of pattern to these footsteps and their movements. They only seem to come when I am on shift. I've asked the other employees at my company and they say they haven't heard any footsteps. The footsteps can only be heard from 11pm onwards, when the school's Outdoor lights go out. These floodlights are set on a timer every day and they shut off at exactly 11 p.m. The footsteps never come on nights when it rains. I've shone my light at the fence in the direction that I hear the footsteps a couple of times and when I do that, I hear a huge thud crash against the fence and then the footsteps just resume mimicking me. Like I said, I can't do much about a person outside of the school grounds walking around. As long as they stay out, it's not my problem. I worry that one day something's going to happen. The school faces the woods on most sides, so there are many places for the owner of those footsteps to come from and run to. I get freaked out when the school gate is open and I have to go and close it. I wonder if... Something is going to come out of the darkness, charging towards me and what it might look like. I think it's human, though, which makes this much more unpleasant. 
I wish that I had an ending for you, but I don't. It just ends with me, hoping that the footsteps will stop one day, or at least continue to stay away from the school, and from me. This happened last night, and I'm still shook up about it. I was at home, and I was watching this show about people trying new kinds of food and their reactions to the food. It wasn't that great, and I was barely paying attention to it, and that was when I heard the doorbell. Oh, by the way, I live alone, so I wasn't expecting anyone. I headed over to the front door, and opened the door without much thought, and definitely without hesitation. There was a woman there. She was dressed in a one-piece dress, which seemed uncomfortable for her, especially during this season. It was winter. She stood there, looking freezing, saying nothing, just glaring at me with a blank expression on her face. It was almost as if she was looking through me. There we both stood in silence, staring at one another. I was searching my brain for any possible links or ties that I might have to this silent woman stood at my doorway. She wasn't an ex-girlfriend, co-worker, nor acquaintance. I was racking my brain when the thought occurred to me. This isn't worth my time. So I asked outright. What's up? She spoke, but her voice was so quiet that I could barely make out a syllable. I said, what? In a loud voice, and all I got back were more mumbles. I was about to shut the door on her when I felt a jolt of power against the door. I was really shocked by this, and naturally, I tried to shut the door on her harder. She jammed her leg in between the door and the frame of the door. She seemed hell-bent on getting in. Like a complete contradiction of her meek and quiet voice, she was now proving to be strong and forceful. However... I managed to shake her off and shut the door. My hands moved quickly towards the lock, and I sighed when I heard that satisfying sound of the door locking. What followed was her ringing the doorbell again and again. It was endless. Worse than the doorbell was the sound of her hands pummeling the frosted glass off my door. It sounded like she was determined to smash it. I felt so panicked, I couldn't do much about the situation, it, it happened so quickly. My heart was jumping in my chest while my mind was trying to rationalize it. Then I heard the sound of the neighbor's doorbell ringing and banging at their door. It sounded like there was more than one person out there. I was really worried. I heard them screaming next door. They had a family. I just stood there frozen. It took a while for my brain to get into gear. Fears, icy fingers, gripped my heart, and I felt like they would never let go. I heard the woman move up to the next apartment, the one after my neighbor's apartment. Enough was enough. I grabbed one of my golf clubs and raced out into the hall, shouting as many menacing threats as I could. I saw that woman retreating down the steel communal stairs, and she looked over her shoulder at me and smiled, as if to suggest... She wasn't frightened by my threats. I headed back in and locked the door after me. That night, I tried to get to sleep, yet sleep wouldn't come because I heard nails scratching my door, gentle knocks, and a pleading, quiet voice begging me to open the door. I was too scared to sleep and far too scared to move. I can still hear that sound, the sound of her nails against the splintered wood of my door. I don't know what happened that night, or if she'll be back, but that was the scariest experience that happened to me. I often shudder at the thought of what might have happened if she got in. <laughs> 